verse 14. Let's be great. For the love of Christ constrains us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And he died for all that they which live should not be forced unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. How about that? Yeah. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We'd like to turn over and read the companion scripture and make your only thing in that. Second Corinthians. Turn over to Luke, the fifth chapter. We'll read in verse. Begin reading verse 36 down to 38. And he said, and he spake also a parable unto him. No man put a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agree is not with the old. No man put the new wine in the old bottle. How about that? Else the new wine will burst the bottle and be spilled, and the bottle shall perish. But new, but new wine must be put in the new bottle, and both are preserved. I'd like to speak to this morning on mixing the old with the new. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writing to the brethren, he was encouraging them and giving them some sublime lessons in Christianity. And he was showing them that it is much as Christ died for everybody, that shows that everybody was a sin. Everybody was condemned. Everyone was defied. And he goes on to say that if you come in contact with this man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and you obey him as his word says, then there will be something that takes place in your life. There will be a change. Now I'd like to submit to you this morning that the world is filled with miracles. If we look around us, you can see some great things that God has done. The sun, the moon, the stars, the plants, the insects, and yet even ourselves. But the greatest miracle that has ever taken place on the face of this earth is when a man or a woman gets saved. Amen. Amen. You might say it doesn't seem like a very significant event. Well, my friend, that's the most significant event. That could ever take place in anyone's life. The Apostle Paul said, Therefore, if any man be a Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. We like to believe that church. Oftentimes we quote, oftentimes we think about it, but it would behoove us to look down into it sometimes. He said, If any man, that makes it all of us. That makes the people across the ocean, your next door neighbor, people down the street, no matter what their nationality is, no matter what their background is, the apostle said, if any man, now he's not just talking about man being man, but he's talking about man being mankind. That includes women, little girls, little boys, or whoever it is. If any man, be in Christ. He is a new creature. This becoming a new creature is not a change of your molecular upmate, uh, up, uh, up, 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 up
It's not a change that takes place in your body, physically. Yeah. Although there may be some good things that take place when you get saved. It is not a gradual process of elimination. True. It is not someone quitting or ceasing to do sinful things over a long period of time. But what salvation is, is an instantaneous work of grace that saves a man or woman in an instant from all sin. Yes. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. If you profess Christianity and are still sinning, you are not saved. Amen. Amen. I don't care how long you've been around the church and what your function is. If you have sin in your life, you're not saved. He said, if any man be in Christ, he can do creature. All things are passed away. The things we used to do are passed away. Amen. The former things are passed away. God wants each one of us to get this experience. Sad to say that most of the world does not have it. Most of the people that profess Christianity do not have it. Most of the people that get this experience do not maintain this experience. And rather we better be careful that we don't try to mix old things in with new things. Amen. The Bible says in one place, for in Christ, in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. If our salvation does not come by works, it is not because we put forth great effort. It is not because of our intellectual ability or our physical skills. But salvation is a work of grace. None of us deserve it. And if all of us had our just desert, we'd be in hell already. But it's because of the mercy of God. Think with me a little. Where would you be if God had left you alone? What would be your predicament this morning? If God had just left you, go on your own way. Let you continue on in what you were doing. You'd be in bad shape this morning. Oh, but you need to be on the face of the earth because of the things you were doing. But the Bible tells us that God wants to make us new creatures in Himself. And, and may the old things be passed away. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, no, uh, no uncircumcision, but a new creation or a new creature in Christ. Amen. Now the reason why he must make us new is because he really has nothing to build upon from what we are in sin. All that we have out there, the best that we have, is filthy rags. The most we have needs to be destroyed. That's why you cannot just fix up your life. You cannot just put things uh, away to the side and expect to be a Christian. It's going to take old-fashioned salvation to become a new creature. And if you find some new way, you'll be the same old fellow you always be. Amen? Now I'm thankful this morning that God saved me from my sins. I don't know how you feel, but that was the greatest moment that ever took place in my life. I do remember very well how I was trying to find a park. And I was puffing on some weed. And the Holy Ghost began to deal with it. And I searched all over trying to find that part. Man, I couldn't find it. And as I have tried to drown out the convicting power of God, the harder I tried, the more he worked for me. The more I tried to sit beside, the more he talked to me. You ever had experience like that? Amen. Hey, hey, and as I uh, got more and more of the conviction, I went by one of the, he's a brother now, but I went by one of my friends up, and I gave him my last cigarette. And I went home and I put my headphones on. And I tried to drown it out. But the harder I tried, the more he talked to me. The more he dealt with me. Until at long last, brother. Amen. Down in that table. 
I just decided I'm quitting it. I'm giving this up. I went up there and my mother was asleep. I woke up and I said, Mom, or Mom, whatever I call I said, I want to be saved. And I never will really forget it. I got a few thousand things like I really what I was saying because she was sleeping. But I went back downstairs and began to tear those posters off my wall. I know you hurt, but every once in a while I want to remind you. Hey, hey, I went down to bed and began to tear those posters off my wall. I began to get that stuff out of my drawer I knew I'd sit in the hat in there. I went in my closet and started cleaning it out. Got rid of my jewels. We came down to Springfield, brother. I got paid. And listen, it's the best thing that has ever happened to me. I still remember when God said, I still remember that long sin, and I hid it up. Oh, then I felt so new. I felt so clean. What a relief it was to have the burden of me. Oh, it takes me away. Like that color that you see sometimes. Got the bread and big sack on his back. On his way up the mountain. Try it. Every step, being uh, weighted down a little more, about to come to my wood thing. There he is. He just stepped in. And just took it all away. In a moment, just like that. I mean, people I hate, but this I like. Love came along. And the trees and the grass, the great God, everything was different. I felt a revolution take place inside of me. Not just on the outside, but inside. Something changed. But the things I used to love, I began to despise and hate. And the things I used to hate and despise, I began to love. I started liking the Bible. I started liking these creatures around here. I started liking the faith.
greatest of this salvation is the new experience for everyone that gets it. It is our business to keep it working and to keep it new. If your salvation gets old on you will not enjoy it anymore. Come on! This experience is an experience that's dead and should be kept up to date and new. It's discouraging when you get something and you use it for such a time and it just wears off the blue. Finally, you set it over in the corner somewhere. You know the adage, old uh, new brooms we clean? You ever heard of that? Yeah. Well, I'm telling some of the adages. They say new brooms we clean. You know when people get a new broom, man, they're glad to use that. But let it get beat up a little while and they sit it over in the corner. Get the dirt new brooms we clean. Salvation is something that can be kept up to date and ever and ever new. There are battles and victories to be won if we are willing to fight them. Come on! Amen. Now listen, the worse you are out there in sin, the more you've got to fight after you get there. That's why, young people, if you go out there, remember, if you want to come back, you've got much to wait through. If you go out there and keep yourself in pain, remember, when you come back, you are going to have to disentangle yourself. And it's not as easy as it might sound. Sometimes it takes sense to you hear. You hear you hear. To really get like it like you want to have it. So do not let this experience. God wants to make a new creature or a new creation out of you. But if you decide to go back to former things, you will find yourself in desperate trouble. Amen. You can't mix the old with the new and expect it to work. This experience can be new. You know, now, how long are you going to say that this is a You know that? There's still some fight. Amen. And you might think that you got something to beat just the way you want. And then uh, the Holy Ghost will show you and get it down a little bit more.
the last thing that God says on the outside. Externals are not in their place. But it's what's internal that counts. Tomorrow, he said, a new spirit will I give unto you. Right. And a new heart. Amen. What's he saying here? He'll change the way you think. Your attitude about things will be different. Your love and your affection will be different. Your uh, thoughts will even be different. Amen. Amen. Ephesians. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1. You will hurry along by the grace of God. Ephesians 5, 20. Excuse me, I was born in front of the dark. For ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that he have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that he put up concerning the former conversation or your former conduct or your former deportment or your former demeanor or your former uh, uh, way you like that he put up concerning these former things, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful life. And be renewed in the spirit of the mind. And that we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. What's Paul talking about here? Well, he's talking about full salvation. Amen. And what he's saying here is, if you get what God's talking about, you'll have true holiness in what he's done. You won't be rolling on the floor and barking like a dog. You won't be acting unseen. Amen. You won't be arguing with negative people. Amen. You won't be getting up on the wrong side of the bed two or three days, day, one day a week. Come on! You won't be fussy on your job. You won't be being and angry and people are ready to approach you. You won't get mad and stay at home for two or three days because somebody spoke to you the wrong man. Amen! You won't be smoking and drinking and lying and hurting still. Amen. There'll be nothing about you that'll be sinful. You won't be willing to do that that you fail to understand if you see it in the Bible. You can submit yourself and be humble. You can apologize. You can ask forgiveness. You can confess to being wrong. Amen. Amen. There's a whole lot of folks that claim to be new creatures and still got a whole lot of old things about them. They're still old in some way. Come on. And Jesus said, you cannot mix the old with the new and expect it to work. Amen. Wherefore, putting away the lie, you can't lie and say truth. Amen. I don't care if every preacher in Springfield gets together and sits in the back of that or comes in this building, it's true nevertheless. You can't lie and say Amen. You can't do it. Amen. Wherefore, putting away the lie, speak every man truth with his name. For we are members one of another. There's no need in us testifying above that which we are living. Our lives should be commensurate or equal to our testimony and vice versa. And when you testify above what you are living, you are opening yourself up for a bad success and a delusion. No need to fool ourselves. Uh, the devil does not care whether we uh, pound the bench, run the yard, right. jump to the ceiling if we please. Amen. Amen. Come on! But if you can't live what you're talking about, it doesn't matter to him or uh, he'll be. You can express us with your flowery words and your high-sounding testimony and your eloquence. 
and your ability to finagle your sentences. But when you get done, you're just as empty as when you started. Alright? Amen? You still got some old things about you that's bothering Amen. Like every so often you get mad. But you gotta be, you gotta be get around that. You you you'll make it to you for it. Might have to play on your zodiac sign. The fact that you didn't get enough bread. I didn't get enough sleep. I'm sorry, I'm so snappy. Next time we do it, we'll go make it out of here. Amen. Come tell me if you see me when I'm not right. You know, come here when you go to the bed. I'm ready to devour you from the bottom of your feet. Who me, bro? How would you know? Look at the jump you got. Dad, dad. If I'm just sick, I'm telling you the truth now. Folks are mixing some old things with some new. Come on. That's why the church has the problem she has. There's some folks, yet some preachers, that still got some old things about and they're trying to mix it with new things yeah. and still trying to preach. Amen. And one of the, one of the qualifications of the ministry is to be judged. Is that right? Yeah. In other words, the Bible says you can't really be a preacher unless you're fed with people. Come on! It's that to be done! If these folks pick out certain one they don't like, and get out of their can. Kaboom! <laughs> and everybody will know what you're talking about. They'll blast you what? They'll all call your name. And never apologize. And that's why you tell me, it's okay. Amen. Brother, all things we do just won't be. You can't do it on the I mean, you can, but it won't work. It just won't work. Now, if you're going to be new, be new. If you're going to be old, be old. Just be what you're going to be. Then, I don't need you to fool out. Come on. If you're going to be a sinner, just be one. Don't fool us. Don't try to fool us. Because most of the time you're not. But besides that, you can't fool God. And the Father now that he's got the last word. He decides whether you're going to heaven or hell or not. Not the pastor. Amen. Not the minister. Amen. Not the saints. God decides that. Amen. 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 Young people, you especially must be careful that you don't mix all things with new. Amen. If you used to be cool, you can't be cool anymore. Amen. 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 If you used to be slick, you can't be slick anymore. I'm talking to you young men. Well, amen. Thank you. Amen! If you had a little funny walk, you got to quit walking like that. Amen! You got a little dragging of the leg still left behind you to learn how to lift it up. <laughs> hey man! Your leg's not broke off right. <laughs> Glory. <Glowing. laughs> Come on! I tell you folks, this is some old thing. Come on! Folks want to get just as close as they can to being well without somebody to ever put a finger on. Right. Stand on you! Yeah. The world is! Because the heart is that way. One is on the outside, it's on the inside. Amen. If you've got to ask, you can work. Amen. 
But I'll fix it so that Brother Hampton or Brother Kimber can't say nothing to me because I haven't stepped over the boundary. Your line is way back there because you know better. You already over the line. Amen. But folks are mixing some old thing with some new and call it salvation. It's not salvation, it's battle in the spirit. By having I mean false churchism. Amen. Thank you, rest and hold it. Because I don't want to be mixing no old thing with them. I'll tell you that right now. Amen. I find myself using free jobs I used to live. You but I don't know what's wrong with me. What's happening to? What's the deal, fella? What's going on? Come on, with my pad, man. We are cool out. Come to my tree. We're gonna get laid. That's raised, man. Yeah, I knew that. One. You don't hear me talking like that, do you? Thank God why I'm saved. An old thing passed away. I don't even want to talk like that anymore. I'm not trying to be cool. But what are you trying to be? Sad. Holy. Without blame. Without refuse. Without imposing before heaven. That's what I'm trying to do. Amen. Come on, we don't have to go once. As I said not long ago, we are not trying to be playboy. We are not trying to see how many sisters we can get the flock after us. Amen. And that goes to the young ladies. We are not trying to see how many young men we can get to like us. When you walk by, you want all the brothers to get in a hug and marvel and remark about how nice you look this morning. Oh. And you go home and change your apparel two or three times a day. Oh. You got to change your, your uh, apparel twice a day just so you can impress people and show how you can look so good. In your clothes. And how many pairs of changeable suits you have. Now we can understand, and I'm not trying to put anyone in the body. If you happen to come to serve and you get uh, somehow a stain, or if you get uh, damp because of the humidity, or for some real reason, I'm battling it, I would have to the Holy Ghost in you. I'm not trying to buy anybody. But this going on with Jason to be changed, yeah. to be cute, yeah. to be seen. Yeah. You still got some old things in it, yeah. and you're not sanctified.
and all it is is filth and ungodliness. That's all it is. Seducers and wicked men, libertines, harlots, wife stealers, husband stealers. That's all it's about. Amen. Come on. So when you get saved, you get a new spirit. You have to say, you get a new heart. You try to mix old and new, it won't be long before you be back to the new. Amen. You know, when you get saved, you don't be trying to fix your hair and put a breast piece. Even if you're a young sister, you must be careful that the spirit of the world and their passion will slip up on you and have you fixing your hair like they're fixing theirs. Amen. Amen. Come on. You must be careful that when these styles come out of all this that you keep yourself pure in the sight of God. Amen. All you need to do is do what you've been through. Just stay safe. No need to try to fix their hair like If they got their hair all going to the front, your hair got to be going all to the front. Now that's the only thing we can see about you, you know. But you figure you didn't do the body box and nothing else worried about me with my hair. But I got to have my hair worried. I mean, I just like, I like hearing God so much. It's been an hour with the fast. My mind. All the way through there. Let me go on here. That's right. Where am I putting away line? Every man in truth with his neighbor. We are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. I'm about righteous indignation here. Can't have a common fit. Jesus was angry. He didn't sin. You see, it wasn't that much remember. When, those, when he chased those folks out of that temple, it never said he did too. He said, well, I didn't say he did. Yeah, I take this with you. He didn't say he did either. But I tell you this. I can drive somebody out of some place if I got a whip behind the ladder. Amen. I can get real close to you and where you think I'm going to get you and you'll move. Amen. 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 Well, I, I, I challenge you that it, it's a very good possibility that he just took his whip and came real close. And they realized we better get going. <laughs> so don't try to hide behind the fact that Jesus broke old folks out of the temple. Amen. And besides that, there's going to be some folks going to hell with you and I can't be signing them. Don't use them for the excuse for anything. But you're stuck in the real jam. Let me go on here. The angry and sin is not the sun going down upon your rest. Neither give place to the devil. Amen. 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 See, and I'm talking to young people again. You must be careful. Even in places where you buy your food. Right, right. You must be careful of places like showbiz pizza. Right, right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And any place like that, where you have to sit down and you're submitting yourself, or have find yourself being bombarded, with this world in you. Right. That's right. Come on. Amen. If you were just four and a half pieces left, you say it's good pizza. That may be true of nobody in there. But if you really want to stay clear, why don't you buy and leave? Why buy and sit down? Yeah, right. And eat it while that toothbrush is running. And playing that godless music. Well, amen. 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 You cannot 
think, oh, they would do it, that won't work. That's why we don't adopt a gospel rock. Come on! We are getting here so we can see how we can sweat. So we can see how we can bow our heads. Just like those who can get the well and beauty without overstepping. So change the word of some of these worldly songs so we can sing. You know what your problem is? You're mixing old things with new and world. Yeah. 
that I don't just like you do? Don't you know that there's a song that the enemy tried to bring in my mind just like he tried to bring yours? Don't you know that there's thoughts the enemy tried to come against me with like he tried to come against you with? But if you and I don't make up our mind, we just don't go back, then the devil will have a hard time with us. Amen. We ought to make it up. Yes. The devil, I've been there, you preach, I know it's the end of the day. I'm old. Amen. Amen. I know it's the testimony of the I'm the same old rascal I ever did. That's what he said. This is the church world flat. Luke 5 and 36. And he said also a parable of the they must not be this. But don't understand. No man put the feet of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make the ring tears it up. And the piece that was taken out of the old, out of the new, agreeth not with the old. What is Jesus saying here? You can't patch this up. You can't fix this up. You can't sew it up. You have to get something done on it because we made do. If you try to patch it up, when you get finished, it's going to tear you up. You have a hard time when you come to church. You have a hard time when you have to do the world for you. Because you've got to keep the solid from the mold in. You know that's very difficult. You see it in the mall. Amen. Jesus said it won't work. He said you can't find a new thing that just won't agree with the old. And there's nothing about salvation that agrees with sin or how he used to be. No man put a new wine in the old bottle. Else the new wine will spill, will burst the bottle and be spilled in the bottle. shall perish. The new wine must be put in a new bottle. And both are preserved. God saves, He saves the child. Pray for you, you're not saved. You want to get happy. This is the best thing I ever had. I don't regret being saved. Any of you out there that saved your friend, are you glad you saved? Has anything better ever happened to you? Man, you got the best life you can possibly live on this side of the church. If you stay safe, if we're just going on, rather than just stay right with God, when it's all over, you know, you're in heaven forever. But if you refuse to prevail, if you decide to remain the same old fellow you've been, the same old woman you've been, or you try to fix the city, when you get to the judgment, it'll be more with me. If you go to hell, if you lose your soul, you are curse the day you were born. You will wish you were never existed. But there will be no way to get in there. There's many people in the hell right now that attend one day to be saved. If I'm the folks in hell now that had a day in their mind, someday I'm going to become a new creature. Someday we will let God change as we never believe. Make your mind allow God to do that work. Let me use you to judge. Only so, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
made his father go fast. The devil's going to give you the night season and all day long. But keep on running until you come. Make God don't give up, don't yield all. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're looking at Jesus. We're looking at the circumstances. We're looking at what's around us. We're looking at Mama, Daddy, husband, and wife, where you're down. Make God look at Jesus right now.
looking to check yourself out, not excusing yourself. Amen. When you come up short, fix it. Look at diligently. Oh, that any man fail of the grace of God. Amen. The deceitfulness of sin sometimes causes grace to fall apart. Sometimes God just gives us the personal why we must become so disinterested in our own case. Lest any man, let the root of bitterness spring up and choke you bitterness, and thereby many be defined. You know when people come start backsliding and they start kind of talking. People start backsliding and they start pointing out people. They want to blame somebody. They want to blame some situation. Have you ever seen anybody really good? You can backslide and go out in the world and say, well, I'm the one. It's my fault. They always seem like somehow they, they want to find fault and blame the saints and talk about them. Run them down and make the church look bad. Because they feel so guilty inside, they have to find some way to allay that, some way to kind of make themselves feel better. Uh -huh. You better watch that better to spring up and pull you back slide and it'll take you back. <laughs> you better keep looking under Jesus. Unless you fail the grace of God, let God turn you over. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest any fornication cater, or profane person, as he saw, who for one more soul be sold his birthright. Don't you know that after yourself, you can never get it back like you had before. You can't catch it back when it's gone. Well, what did you sell out for? More soul than me, the flesh. Man, be <laughs> Oh, well, you know, after when he would have inherited the best. That's why I think I'm determined not to backslide. I'm afraid if I backslide, God, I'm not going to come up. What more could God do for me to keep this thing? What else can he do to resave me? When God already saved me and he had blessed me and then we have had our testimony, what did God do for me to reclaim me? If I backslide. What could be more pleasant in the church of God that called you going to come back after I had decided that it wasn't pleasant enough to keep me? That if it wasn't comfortable enough to keep me over here, why should I go out there and hope some way I'll come back? Well, I don't want to put sin in the world on an inequality but the church of God. Well, there's no inequality at all. Who stepped in? Thank God I'm a level and I'm above sin. I'm different. Thank God for the change. But he saw all of a chance. And for one more to me, he sold out for the present pleasures. Amen. For pleasures now. For joy now. For happiness now. And he fooled himself. He got tricked. Took a chance and let go. And then when he reached for the rope to be elevated again, there was no rope hanging. God pulled the rope up. He failed the grace of God and God returned to his grace. And when he turned around, he thought he'd go back to where he left it to pick it up, and he could not find it. Could not find it. He didn't, he didn't, why, he was profane in that he didn't count it precious while he had it. He was profane in that he decided that there was something a little more important than his birthright at the time. Well, the birthright went on. I was so now. The birthright is, uh, was dead dogs. And he's he looking pretty good right now. I want something for now. I'm not going to wait until See, my joy, my joy shall be over there, but I, I'm not in heaven yet. I want some pleasures now. And he sold out. And he sold out. And there was chance all into the distance. And one day he needed an off the bats. Saints, don't you know that that which we have is that which will be off the bad of his days? That very thing that we have now, we don't know the day the Lord will call us away, but we better die in his grace. And then you say, that's what you're going to need. You don't know when you're going to die. Don't be like Esau. Thank God if you want to be listed to the monthly morals, if you want to shake hands with the saints of God, if you want to hold out, pray to God and be in the presence of those that have already gone on. They got to be like to sit and talk with them for a while, you know. We were talking about the saints being late in service because they talked late last night because the saints are in town and they like to enjoy them and they're glad to see them and they're just talking until they got to sleep. I'm going to tell you, when you get to heaven and meet the saints and just talk, talk all night and they got to be there. I understand that we've done that. Just keep on talking. 
Pray, sit down, thank God. If you talk a while with this person, there are many, many more here to talk to. So you're not going to get weary. But you're not going to make it if you sell out your ticket. If you sell your ticket, if you lose your ticket, you're not going to make it. Amen. If God has blessed us, hold on to it with all your might. Look, he doesn't just do that skinny and he's fighting of the grace of God. Let's see if he begins planning to get Yes, begin the same as no pledge, there's no problem in serving the Lord. Look at all the certain fun sets that happen. They don't stress about them. They're not worried about trying to stay safe anymore. They're not worried about devotion time. They're not worried about pressing prayer. They use the Lord's name in vain. They're not fearful like I am. They're free and I'm bound. That old wood is bringing up in here. <laughs> oh, he said, for the joy that was set before me, we follow him for the joy. Also, he sold his birthright. For we know what happened when he had an inherited blessing, he was rejected. But yet, I'm the son. Uh, my daddy owns all this. I clearly have to have it. Because you sold it. Yeah, but I'm the citizen. You can't have it. What you used to be don't count. You can't have it. Your brother's got it now. Amen. Dad gave it to him. And he said when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place where repentance was accepted. No place. All he repented. But it didn't do any good. So he caught it and sought it carefully with tears. You know when the careful ought to be? While we have it. He said, looking diligently, that means looking carefully. And then after he lost out, he began looking around for that which he needed because it's time to use it now. Now this birthright will be a promise to me. Right now this birthright will be a great asset to me. But when he looked for it, it was gone. Why? Because he did not count it worthy. It did not count. It was worth dying for. Our birthright is worth dying for saints. Yes. And many have already died for it. That they would not change. Our thought is, why did he put that in there for in the Bible? In the 12th verse. He told us plenty about the 11th verse. And about the faithful thing. How about us? Amen. Do we try to count ourselves less than no? By the name of old, God is the same. He's all in and back. He expects us with the Holy Ghost to be given freely for us to hold out in spite of that. And we have some. I, I, you know, we sit and listen to testimonies around Christmas time in different places. And the saints are holding out. Saints are being pressed, but they're holding out. And the Sister Robinson's testimony wasn't that wonderful. How the Lord gave her children back to her. And they hold out. Amen. Amen. And we can, if you say, and you've been saying the amount of time we've your story, we still have something. Great God, right now, we can write another chapter. Thank God, that's, no, I'm going to say it's still the 11th chapter. We got 40 verses there. And if you do like the Lord, we ought to be able to get 400 for the Thank God, right now, let's go. Okay, this group here. Of how saints have fought the battle through. Thank God, how they held out. Yeah. Amen. Time and family to tell about this brother, and that brother, and this brother, and this sister. They got how they read hell to the devil and nothing over. They kept the track. Hey, the time of hell, thank God. But how the sister did. And how they left the home, thank God. The home and the death and everything. God, everything. Come on. I'm following the Lord. And we think of it thinking, this is just something I want to do, but God write it down as nobility. Beautiful. That I'm beautiful. Thank God. He sat down on the right hand of the Father in heaven. And he sees the saints performing, praise God, in the same spirit that the same old man performed. Yeah. Hold on out, praise God. Go yeah. down to the wall. Doesn't have to make feel bad after all this. Doesn't have to make them pray anymore. Amen. Doesn't have to make feel good. Doesn't have to make them feel bad. Doesn't have to make them shrink under the, they got the pressure of it. And they fight back and go on. Keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. And God says, hey, oh, 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 oh. Did you see that? <laughs> praise God. Look at them, Jesus. You better touch the car. That's not the bad part of it. 
Amen. 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 Amen.
and the Lord said, it doesn't sin in any law. Some of these problems are going to have to stay on the devil. God doesn't care. No man has to sin. No man has to sin. Lay out the devil. He's got to do what I want. He wants to listen to what the Lord wants. He wants not to be out of the line of a very individual. And he'll die. All right, this is a little simple story of how we overcome. I'm going to tell you something I understand if you don't straighten out. Oh, they're not overcome. You can't overcome. You can't have it. Praise God. All right, you all know that song, Singing the Wondrous Love of Jesus? All right, let's stand and get the verses to him. Who's starting to Come on, get out. Right. You just got to be there. You 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 got to be there.